Howdy folks, Nathan here with an SUV. Not exactly an SUV. It's not an SUV, even though they call it an SUV. It's the 2021 Nissan Kicks. And there's some new things for 2021. In this video, I'm going to talk about the things I like, five of them, the things I dislike, five of them. And then near the end of the video, I've got a surprise for you. All right, so let's talk about what's new for 2021 because there are a few things and that includes some new design features with the front and the rear and the interior and that includes a standard 7 inch screen and then an 8 inch screen for the higher end models. Bunch of cool stuff. You know what else is cool? According to Nissan, there are over 100 million, their words, color combinations available with this car. 100 million! 100 million that's crazy i almost doubt that but if they wrote it here then it must be true for a small car this car is extremely comfortable tons of headroom i have a tall torso and overall the comfort in this vehicle is quite good and these seats they do use excellent fabrics and materials for the front seats but what about the rear with my boots on, I am 6'1", and huh, not bad. You know what? One thing I noticed when I sat in here is the fact that, yeah, my, my butt is pretty comfortable. These are sort of scalloped a little bit, so it's not too bad. A third person back here might be a little uncomfortable, but overall, it's not a bad place to be. Now another thing about this vehicle that's quite good is its utility. It's very utilitarian. Now if you could start up there with the roof, you can actually tie real things down and still reach them. I like that. And this I like as well. Pretty damn good space. Now check this out. Overall, this area behind the rear seats is 25.3 cubic feet. And if you push these seats down all the way, you can get up to 32.3 cubic feet of space, and that's pretty good. Yes, of course, this comes out as well. So once you pull it out, unfortunately, the floor is not completely flat, but you also get an actual spare tire. And believe me, I actually have a little bit of um, experience with these because the last Nissan Kicks we had when I was driving it back from my house in Denver to here to Boulder, I got a flat tire. I was able to change the tire in about 20 minutes. As, uh, let me tell you one of the things I absolutely love about this vehicle. Now, for those of you who know me, you know that I like playing music very loud and it keeps the voices out. And when a car has a really good stereo system, even an optional one, I tell people about it. And this one does. Now, this is the optional $1,200 special premium plus package, but if you get it, you get the Bose stereo system. That's an eight speaker stereo system. And you look, it's integrated into the headrest of the driver. Meaning that I get, as the driver, even a better sonic experience than everybody else around me. But we're talking about eight speakers in a tiny car like this. I think that's extraordinary. One of the best things about this vehicle, and as a dad something that would make me absolutely love it. It's actually two things. One is that I would recommend this for somebody who has a young driver but wants a new car. Why? Aside from the fact it's relatively economical and relatively affordable, it has a crazy safety system. It's the Nissan Safety Shield 360. And I'm gonna read right off the paper because there's a ton of stuff and this is standard. This comes on all Nissan Kicks from the base model 19,500 all the way up to this model and that gives you forward collision warning rear automatic braking rear sonar blind spot warning rear cross traffic alert lane departure warning haptic steering wheel high beam assist that's not bad at all considering that is standard safety equipment and the next one is price, because even though this is a relatively inexpensive car, it's not the most inexpensive in its class. As a matter of fact, it can be kind of pricey. Now this is the SR. Now I did say that I do like the Premium Plus package. However, this vehicle's SR base price is 21,940, that's not bad. 
but when you add all the goodies that this car has, it comes out to $26,730. You can get a lot more substantial vehicle for that price. Here's the thing, for that price, <laughs> you're way over the Hyundai Venue's numbers, and the Hyundai Venue directly competes with this vehicle. It's another one that people call a crossover, which it's not, or even an SUV, it's definitely not. It's a front wheel drive, very simple vehicle, but it is base priced at $18,750. This one is base priced at $19,500. Yeah, so it's not the cheapest. All right, so my next minor gripe is the fact that this vehicle really isn't quite as efficient as I was hoping it would be. That's 31 miles per gallon city, 36 miles per gallon highway, and 33 miles per gallon combined. That's what its numbers are. So if you look at other vehicles that compete with this one in terms of inexpensive CVT small cars, a lot of them are getting like over 40 miles per gallon on the highway or nearly 40 miles per gallon on the highway. So this one, yeah, I know it's kind of tall, but I was hoping for just a little bit better MPG. Why am I showing you this rear wheel? It's pretty, isn't it? But you know what it isn't? Powered. That's because they do not offer an all wheel drive option on this vehicle. Now, unfortunately, I know, I, I, and I fight with a lot of you guys, I just don't consider a crossover something that doesn't have an all wheel drive option, and this one does not. It, it doesn't communicate at all. It's. How do I put it? For those of you who have played video games where you, you know the, the steering has no feel really or it's completely simulated, that's kind of where this is. Now I know that this is not a sports car, but I wouldn't mind at least a little bit more weight behind the steering. It's just super, super numb. Oh yeah, I live my life a quarter mile at a time. Please, look. This is one of the biggest issues with this vehicle is the fact that when you combine 122 horsepower with a CVT, you're not gonna go fast. I wish they changed around the way it was set up so it would be a little bit quicker off the line. It's not. And I really, really wish it was just a little bit quicker in general. So with that being said, I'll tell you what, how about a surprise? We're going to do a real world zero to 60 run in this car. And I wager the Nissan Kicks might be one of the slowest vehicles we've had up in the Rocky Mountains ever. All right, here we go. Zero to 60. Now I know not to rev it too much. I'm gonna get a little tiny bit. And ready guys? All right, zero to 60, Nissan Kicks. Ooh. Yeah, it's powerful. I think my beard's getting a little bit longer. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think I'd like it better longer. Oh, ho, ho. woo! 14.19. Holy underpants, that was slow. Whew. I get it. This is a vehicle that's not supposed to be fast, but. I just wish it had a little tiny bit more pep, just a little bit more, and I wish, as a trade-off, if it didn't have more pep, that it had better steering feel. And I wish, if it didn't have better steering feel, maybe it would have all-wheel drive. So, yes, there are a few things that I have against this vehicle, but I will say this, in terms of a comfortable, utilitarian, all-around, sweet little car that's not going to offend anybody, and that has a killer, sound system that's optional. This car's it. Thanks for joining me for the Fastlane Car. This is Nathan. I'll see you next time.